Audi's SUV lineup is expanding rapidly, with a new Q3, Q8, and e-tron all coming soon. But one model that's been around for a while is the Q7. It has been a very successful model, especially after its full redesign a couple years back. And now for 2019, we've got a few updates inside and out to keep things fresh. Special thanks to our friends at Audi of Lexington for providing this fully loaded Prestige Q7 in Glacier White Metallic. And if you're in the market for any new Audi, be sure to stop by their dealership or visit their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that said, let's go ahead and see if the Q7 is still one of the best products in the class. So getting started with the exterior, the Q7 was fully redesigned in 2017, so the styling is pretty much in line with all the latest models. The signature single frame grille is unaltered for 2019, with all models coming standard with this matte silver finish. However, there is also the option to black everything out with a titanium black optic package on Prestige. And then turning to your headlights, we have the very modern full LED setup that comes standard on Prestige, while the two other trims come with Xenon HIDs instead. Fog lights are built into the main unit, and those black circles are for your safety systems. Around at the side, it's got a surprisingly sporty design and looks smaller than Rivals even though it's actually larger than the Volvo XC90, Acura MDX, or Infiniti QX60. And then around back, most of the signature Audi elements are on board, like the clamshell tailgate and dual horizontal exhaust outlets. But you will have to live without the dynamic turn signals that most of their other models have. And while we're back here, I'll mention the tow ratings of 4,400 pounds with the four-cylinder and 7,700 pounds with the V6, so long as you get the towing package. So overall, the Q7 is still a very handsome SUV that expertly rides the line between aggression and sophistication. While the general styling doesn't change for 2019, you do still get some all new wheel options. Now we have the familiar 20 inch 10 spoke alloys that are probably the most common selection, but you can now get some new 21 inch wheel combinations. Otherwise the premium and premium plus come standard with plain looking 18 inches. Checking out the mirrors, they are heated and power folding for all trims, but you will need to get at least the Premium Plus for auto dimming and blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. But for 2019, the entire driver's assistance package is now standard on Prestige instead of an extra cost option. That will give you active lane keeping assist, auto high beam headlights, and adaptive cruise control with traffic jam assist. While some of the rivals do give you those features standard, it is still nice to see them included on more trims. Finally, wrapping things up with the outside, all models come with silver roof rails, as well as a 22 and a half gallon fuel tank. That's good for a 495 mile range with the four cylinder and a 473 mile range with the V6, both running on premium fuel. Anyways, that concludes the outside, so now let's go ahead and see what's different on the inside. So like pretty much every Audi, you do have a standard smart entry system, and it does come with this really nice looking key fob with real metal trim along the bottom. And then to get inside the vehicle, there is a sensor behind the door handle, so all you have to do is grab it. Alright, so first looking inside the 2019 Q7. Uh, there's not a lot of big changes, nothing readily obvious. However, there are some small details that have been changed out this year. Like always, real leather is standard across the board. And for your basic color options, you have this black, gray, beige or brown or on the prestige you can upgrade to the luxury package and that gets you an exclusive brown color with Valcona leather. Now turning to your door trim it is the same as pretty much all Audis so you've got a soft touch plastic on the armrest which would be leather with the luxury package 
And then the rest is also soft touch plastic or you have some of that real gray oak trim. Now two person memory seats are standard across all trims as are four fully automatic windows. Coming to the seat here, it is 12-way power adjusting on the Prestige trim compared to 8-way power adjusting on the two lower trims. And then again with the luxury package, in addition to the Valcona leather, you can get massaging. This of course is the standard leather and it does have a nice feel to it as well. I don't know if you can see that, but that was your soft closing door, so if you fail to close it on the Prestige trim, it will go ahead and pull it closed for you. So like I said, checking out the cabin of the 2019 Q7, uh, everything does look the same, including the same really nice materials. So up top, you've got a soft touch plastic, and then that goes down to a generous amount of real wood trim and piano black trim above that. And then that same pattern mirrors itself for the lower areas. So you've got piano black on the right side and then gray oak on the left side. Now I will mention a lot of Audis include leather trim down here on the Prestige trim. However, this model, it still requires you to get the luxury package. Now to start the vehicle, of course, you do have push button start up here in the traditional spot. So you just press it to go. Now when you press that, you will notice the 8.3 inch display pops out of the dash. Now if you choose the premium trim, you will get the 7 inch display instead. Now one of your big benefits of going for the Prestige trim is that you've got the standard Audi virtual cockpit. Now this is the same as you've seen on many other Audis. So you've got a lot of cool features, the biggest of which is your Google Earth Maps. So as you can see this is very cool and very detailed as always and continues to be something that rivals don't have. Now backing up to the steering wheel, you have electric power steering fed through this thin rimmed leather wrapped wheel. You have the standard fare buttons. These are pertaining to your virtual cockpit. And then on this side, you've got your steering wheel heating, which is optional through the cold weather package. And then a few other buttons. Rain sensing wipers are actually standard across all trims. Now one thing you will notice that is new for 2019 is that the Prestige trim now comes standard with the full driver's assistance package that used to be an extra cost option. And that does include your radar cruise control, various other safety systems, and even the traffic jam assistant. Alright, so now let's go ahead and talk about storage, where the Q7 has a class competitive amount. Starting out here at your center console, as you can see, it does split into two sections for independent adjustability. And then you can just raise it up to see the actual storage itself. Now this is changed for 2019, since so on Prestige trim, you've now got a wireless phone charger in here. So you can just stick your phone on there. Just one thing to be aware of is that if your phone is large, like mine is, this is 6.2 inches, uh, it may not fit properly. Of course, though, if you have any trouble with that, you've still got your traditional two USB ports and an aux jack. Then as far as other storage, you've got another big blank area here, as well as a small storage bin up in the front with a 12 volt outlet. Now, part of the reason Audi has been able to give you so much storage is this electronic shifter. So for drive, you just pull back, and then you can press over to the right to shift manually here or via the paddle shifters. For reverse, you just go the opposite way. And when you pull it up, you will find a 360 degree camera standard on the Prestige trim. Now this is a really nice camera setup. 
especially since you have several different views. So you can switch to like your front view as well as make the 360 view bigger and then have a visualization of the parking sensors. And then finally for park, all you have to do is press the P. And you do have an electronic parking brake as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and sample the audio system. Now this is the middle option that comes on the Premium Plus and Prestige. It is a 19 speaker Bose Premium audio system. On the base model, you get a 10 speaker setup and there's even an optional 2000 watt 23 speaker Bang & Olufsen system available for five grand. As you can tell, sound quality is excellent. Now coming on up to the climate controls, this is the four zone automatic setup that comes in the Prestige. However, the Premium Plus and Premium come with a three zone automatic setup. And that does also give you these cool touch sensitive toggles. So basically you can hover over them and get a preview of what you're changing before you actually change it. So this is a pretty cool setup and it's also very easy to use as well. Off to the side of those controls, you will find three-stage heated seats on all trims. But three-stage ventilation is standard only on the Prestige or optional on the Premium Plus. Now up above the climate, you've got another row of buttons. You've got several different things on it. This is for your drive mode select. As you can see, you've got five different modes, including an individual mode, which allows you just to cater all the different settings to what you prefer. This button right here defeats your auto start stop. And then you will also notice this new button for 2019. This is your auto parking. So on the prestige trim, you can press this button and this will automatically put you into a parking spot. And the last button I wanna mention is your screen off button. This will turn it off. It does not drop it down below the dash like it used to though. But anyways, that brings us up to our Audi MMI system. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look. So other than having the big touch pad, the actual MMI system itself is the same as in all other Audis. So you just go into your menu and you can scroll through all these various settings. So you can click into vehicle, for instance, change your drive modes. In phone, you've got all the standard fare things, like your directory with all of your contacts, which automatically sync over. And then in navigation, you come to a screen where you can draw letters on to type out your destination. And as I've already shown you on virtual cockpit, you do have your Google Earth Maps. This does require a subscription after one year. And the last thing I'll touch on is your Audi smartphone interface. This is where Android Auto or Apple CarPlay would appear when you connect your phone via the USB port. But anyways, that's a real quick rundown of the Audi MMI system. But we do have a very detailed tech help video available if you want to learn more. A link to that video is going to be in the description. All right, so moving on up, you will find a frameless auto dimming mirror with a compass on all models. And then you've got your usual three Homelink Universal remotes up here. Now, one of the big ways Audi distinguishes itself from the rivals is that you've actually got a standard panoramic moonroof across all trims. As you can see, you have a power sunshade, and this glass goes all the way from the front to nearly the third row, so it is really a huge amount of glass. And 
And then of course the front portion does open up just like a traditional moonroof. And you've got a built-in wind buffer. So overall, even though the Q7 has been left mainly unchanged for three years now, it's really hard to find anything to complain about. This is still a really luxurious and high-tech space with all of the features that you could possibly want and plenty of space for the entire family. So overall, I'm still very impressed. And now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason who will finish up the rest of the cabin. Now as far as rear space is concerned in the 2019 Q7, you're going to find 38 inches of both leg and headroom. That does place it above main rivals like the Acura MDX and Volvo XC90. The seat is a really beautiful design, it's very comfortable, and it can also slide and recline. Now turning over to the door trim, of course it is made of nice materials, so you where your elbow will rest is a nice padded plastic, as well as above it and on the very top. Additionally, on the Prestige model, you will get rear window sunshades. Your door handle is a nice metal, and you do have some more of that wood trim. Now in the center, of course, you are going to find plenty of amenities. So you do have rear air vents on all models. And on our Prestige trim, you will also find four zone climate controls, so each rear passenger can adjust their temperatures and zones independently. Now you just use these knobs here, and this will be for your temperature adjustment if the vehicle was on. Now below that, you will notice that we do have three stage heated rear seats as well, and that is included in the cold weather package. Down below that, you will find two 12 volt outlets. However, you don't have any USB ports or a charging port or anything like that. Of course, you do have a center armrest. When you lower it down, it is leather wrapped. And you do have two pop-out cup holders. Now up top, all Q7s will feature this beautiful panoramic moonroof. And I would like to point out that it goes all the way past the second row seats, so this is a very open air design. Additionally, we do have some LED lighting, touch capacitive as well as an assist grip and coat hook. And the headliner is pretty nice, and on the luxury package it would be Alcantara. Now as far as rear space is concerned behind Drew's position, I still have probably about eight inches of leg room, and Audi was nice enough to include these knee cutouts. Additionally, my feet can slide up under the seat very easily, and it's the same basically all the way with the seat all the way back. So overall, the rear seat of the Q7 is one of the best in the class. It offers plenty of luxury amenities like the four zone climate and heated rear seats, in addition to plenty of space to keep everyone nice and happy. Now to fold the second row seats, it does require two different steps. So you just grab this little handle to pull the seat back. Now when you do that, you will find this other button, and you need to push down on that and pull up, in which it will detach the seat and make it fold right out of the way. Now in the third row of the Q7, you're going to find a class competitive amount at 29 inches of leg room and 36 inches of head room. So let's go ahead and get back there and see how it is for a 5'8 adult. All right, so getting back in the third row here, as you can tell, I don't really have very much leg room at all, but my feet can slide up under the seat, so that's pretty nice. And it's also worth noting that these are slid all the way back, and they can slide forward to give the third row more room. Audi also gives you some amenities, so you do have a cup holder back here, as well as a nice speaker up top, and some LED lighting. 
So overall, this isn't the best third row in the class, but it's also not the worst. And I really like that I do have some foot space and that the rear seats can slide forward to give the third row occupants more room. Now coming around to the tailgate, of course it is power on all models, however it is only hands free on the premium plus and prestige trunks. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open. Now inside the cargo area of the Q7 you're going to find a class competitive amount of space. You'll find 15 cubic feet behind the third row seats, expanding to 38 cubic feet with them folded and 72 with all the seats folded. That does place it about 15 cubic feet less than the XC90, but it's a little bit above the Acura MDX. Now we do have a power folding third row, so in order to fold it, just push these buttons. And it does fold nice and fast, unlike a lot of rivals. It's also worth noting that you do have buttons in the second row to fold the third row as well. And under the floor, you do have a little bit more space and a few extra accessories. Passenger seat is that same leather design, and it is 12-way power adjusting on this model since we have the Prestige, but it does match with the driver's seat, so whatever driver's seat you have will also be the passenger seat. In front of the passenger, you do have some more piano black trim, some wood trim, and underneath of that, you do have a nicely dampened glove box that is nicely felt lined as well. Up top, you do have a sun visor with an LED light and mirror. Well guys, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the powertrain and do a quick test drive. All right, so for the powertrain of the 2019 Q7, nothing has changed. So you've still got two different engine options. On the low end models, you start off with a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder that makes 252 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque like it does in several other applications. However, that's not very common in such a big vehicle. Most people opt for the upgraded 3 liter supercharged V6. And that produces significantly more power at 333 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque. Regardless of whatever engine you choose, you're going to have an 8-speed automatic and you're going to be paired with standard Quattro all-wheel drive. And as far as your fuel economy, they're also very similar. So if you get the V6, then it's going to be 19 city, 25 highway, 21 combined, and you're only going to go up 1 MPG combined by going for the 4-cylinder. That's pretty much the basics, so now let's take a brief test drive. Setting off here in the Audi Q7, there's a few things I can tell right off the bat. First of all, it's really a smooth powertrain that feels plenty powerful. Um, this, unlike some of the rivals, there is not a V8 option, but I don't think you're going to be wanting for power. 
And the second thing is the steering. It is really tight. This car feels extremely buttoned down. getting up to speed like I said it's really effortless it does not feel all that big now we've got some drive modes that we can cycle through that was individual so I'm not sure exactly how that's just set up so we'll try a uh, dynamic and see that changes anything. All right, so with dynamic mode, I can tell the throttle response um, is more dialed in. It's an instant, whereas with, I believe we were in comfort, perhaps on the throttle response, that was, uh, uh, you had to push into it a little bit more to get a response. And you can tell, you know, we're kind of going around a, a city street here, kind of a lot of corners, and you can tell, like you said, the body roll is a lot less than any of the really, the big cross, three row crossovers that we've been in before. You can just tell it feels more like a sedan than those vehicles did. They, they felt like big buses and this does not feel like that at all. Also going over some uh, beat up roads here, I have to say um, there's not a real sacrifice of ride quality or anything. There's no harsh impacts coming in. Um, this has the standard suspension and there's just, you can't really feel any harsh impacts or anything coming into the cabin. Like I said, that's despite being, you know, buttoned down in that German way, but you're not sacrificing your ride quality. And then you can't even get an air suspension if you want to spend yes, that's more the, money an extra as upgrade. Well on the Prestige. So. And now that we're sitting here in a traffic jam, it's worth noting that for 2019, the Q7 adds the driver assistance package as standard equipment. And that does include traffic jam assist, which will actually take you all the way to a full stop and basically drive the car when you're in a traffic jam, and as well as all of your regular safety systems like blind spot monitoring, lane keeping assist, and all of that good stuff. So that's a really nice touch that Audi made for 2019, and it's definitely something that you'll appreciate if you live here in the city or something like that. All right, and here's our auto start stop restarting. Oh, not bad, not bad. But overall, I really can't say enough positive about this driving experience. Um, it's fantastic. You can definitely just tell the German influence. It's de it feels like an Audi. Even though it's a big Audi, it definitely feels like an Audi. And um, you haven't driven all the rivals or anything by any stretch of the imagination, but this is the best SUV I've ever driven in this size category. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching the first in-depth look at the 2019 Audi Q7 Prestige. Stay watching for quick of the pricing, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.